This lesson covers Active Directory sites. Many of the concepts that have been covered so far have really been logical. A domain, a tree, a forest, organizational units, these are all logical constructs that we can really create to any pattern we desire. But there are physical infrastructure elements as well. Your physical locations, the network links between those locations, physical domain controllers. And so one of the key parts of Active Directory, because it is this multi-master replication, is making sure you do optimize the replication traffic. And really there's two types of replication going on between domain controllers. There's replication of the various partitions of the Active Directory, which is things like a domain, the configuration partition, the schema partition, then there's the domain DNS zones and forest DNS zones application partition, and then there's sysvol. And sysvol used to be replicated using the file replication service, but is now replicated using distributed file system replication or DFSR. So we define in Active Directory sites, which are defined in terms of IP subnets. This allows domain controllers to ascertain what site they're in based on their IP address. They can then work out which site other domain controllers are in. Then there's a process called the KCC, the Knowledge Consistency Checker. And this actually goes ahead and automatically defines the various connections between domain controllers to make the most efficient replication topology. Now there is a different topology depending on if you're within a site or between sites. Because within a site, we're assuming we have very, very good network connectivity. So this knowledge consistency checker is gonna run every 15 minutes and it's gonna look at well, which domain controllers are in each of the various sites. And within a site, it's gonna create a ring topology. And the way replication works is it essentially pulls changes from its partner domain controllers. Now there are some types of change that are pushed. A password change, for example, security failure. These are pushed. But most things are actually just pulled based on a replication frequency. So by default, every 15 seconds within a site, domain controllers will pull the changes. And they track what has changed using something called an update sequence number, which enables them to tell, well, which changes have occurred, which changes do I already have, to stop changes just looping around infinitely. Imagine if you have a circle of replication, you can imagine a change just keeps bouncing between all of them. Well, it can tell if that's a unique change and if it's already received it. So within a site, there's a ring topology. Between sites, I don't want that. So a least cost spanning tree is created. So each of the individual sites have their own ring topologies. And then between them, there'll be a connection that allows the changes to replicate. And we can control very granularly how often replication happens between sites, but it's far less frequent as within a site. Now there are things we can do to actually have redundant connections between the sites and to rebalance those connections. So let's take a look at this. So I'm using Active Directory Sites and Services. And if you go into a particular site, so I have lab, and this has been defined for a particular subnet. So I've defined subnet 192.168.1.0, which is my main subnet for site lab. I also have another subnet for site cave. But if I go to my lab, I extend my servers, I can then go ahead and see my NTDS settings. Now I can right click on this and do properties, and this is where I can enable or disable if it's a global catalog or not. I can see the detail of my various connections. So I can see my main domain controller, my DCO1, replicates from DCO2, and it also replicates from dev DCO1, so that child domain. It replicates to DCO2 and dev DCO1 and my read-only domain controller. But notice it doesn't replicate from the read-only domain controller. The RODC is unidirectional. All it does is pull. I can do this for each of my domain controllers. My DCO2 is going to look very similar. Notice it's not replicating to RODC1. RODC1 is only pulling from one of the domain controllers. My dev child domain controller. I can see it's replicating to DCO1 and DCO2 and from so it's part of that circle. And finally, my read-only domain controller, it's just pulling from DCO1. So it's kind of out there on its own. Now you might wonder, well, it makes sense that RODC1 and DCO1 and DCO2, they're all in the same domain. They would replicate with each other. 
But what is that child domain controller replicating? Remember, there's the global catalog. The global catalog is that subset of information from the other domain. So even completely separate domains have to replicate with each other to get that partial attribute set that makes up the global catalog. But also remember there's the configuration. Well, that's forest wide. The schema is forest wide. The forest DNS zones is forest wide. So I can look at these. I can actually right click on one of these and do properties. Sure enough, I'll see what is being replicated. So I can see the forest DNS zones. I can see the schema and the configuration. So that's what it's replicating. It's replicating the forest wide zones. So the forest DNS zones, the schema and configuration. If I looked at my RODC, I'll see there it's also pulling the domain, savletech.net, and the schema and the configuration. And it's partially replicating all other domains. So this means it's a global catalog. So they're the connections. And the way we actually define these is we have inter-site transports. SMTP really is not used anymore. This was something where IP may have not been a good fit and you could define them using SMTP communications, but really that's just not used today. Now by default, you'll have a default IP site link. Now generally you wanna create your own, but I've just left this default one. I can see the properties and my two sites are in this link. I can give it a cost. How expensive is it to use this link? How often does replication happen over this link? So by default, it's every three hours. That's a very long time. I can specify very granularly certain hours of the day, for example, when you can't replicate. So maybe Sunday, I'm saying, nope, there's no replication available. So what you would do is if you had more sites where there is physical connectivity between those sites. So let's go back to my example picture. In this picture, I actually have particular pipes between this site and this site, and then this site and this site. So I would create a site link, for example, from A to B and from A to C, because there is no direct connection between B and C. So I would never want domain controllers in B trying to replicate directly to C. It would be very inefficient. It would have to bounce via this WAN link. Imagine it even more complicated where you had lots of different links and some were faster than others. Well, the lower the cost of the link that you define in your site link, the more prone Active Directory and the Knowledge Consistency Checker will be to use it. It wants to use the cheapest links available. So if you have a really fast, great link, you'd give it a low cost. If you have a very slow link you don't really want to use, you'd give it a high cost. So this is used to create that replication topology by the KCC. It looks at your site links, how the sites are connected, creates that least cost spanning tree to make sure everything's replicated. You can also create site link bridges, which effectively enable direct replication between different sites. You're saying, hey, I can replicate between these. So these costs are used in a determination of the replication topology. They're also used by the clients. So your client machines have an IP address. They can work out well, which site are they in? When they try and access services like file share, distributed file system, it can work out which one is closest to me based on the cheapest cost to get to that target. Ideally, it's gonna try and use a domain controller or a file share in its local site, but if there isn't one, well, which one is the next closest to me? That's all based on the various costs between all the sites in your environment. So it's very, very important you take time to create all the subnets in your environment create sites for each of your locations. Go and create site links that actually match the physical connections you have between your locations, give them the right cost, set the replication topology, and then the knowledge consistency checker is gonna create the right replication topology. If you don't take time to create dedicated site links between where there is physical connectivity, you don't give it good costings, well, garbage in, garbage out. The KCC, the knowledge consistency checker, can only work with the information you give it. So it's vital you give it accurate data. And below is kind of an example table you may wanna use for cost. So a greater than 10 meg link, maybe give it a cost of 10. 10 to a sort of T1, 100, 1 1.5 to 512. It's just an example. You can really use whatever you want. But the point is the slower the link, the less you wanna use it. So you give it a higher cost. So this concludes the lesson on Active Directory sites and subnets and really just defining your physical topology.